Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Based on the questions I get, many of you guys are concerned about the size of your boas, particularly for the true red tails. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you examples of true red tails of different ages, starting with the 2022 babies, counting back year by year, one per year, until we get to adult animals, just to give you a better idea about what typical sizes are for these animals at different ages. And this is something I've covered before, but based on the questions I'm getting, based on the comments on Facebook, a lot of people just don't get it. And they think boas are giant snakes. And you know, we've kind of been told this by the popular culture notion of what boa constrictors are. Boa constrictors are not giant snakes. They're medium to large snakes. You know, adults, depending on the, uh, on the type of boa, are typically anywhere from four to about 10 feet, you know, sometimes a little bigger than that, but that's pretty rare. So today I'm just going to show you animals. Most of them are holdbacks that I produced over the years. Um, just so you get an idea about the typical, typical sizes. Most of these are going to be Surinams. And I just, I want people not to be so concerned about the size of their boas. As I said before, as long as your boa is growing slowly but steadily, somewhere between maybe six and 12 inches a year, you're doing fine. Um, you know, just stick with the plan. Don't expect your boa to be like 15 feet long in like two years. They're not Burmese pythons. These are boa constrictors. To start with, we have an animal born in 2022. So this Suriname is now almost a year. I think this one is about 11 months old. As you can see, she's not real big. And this is pretty typical for the first year. These animals really don't grow a lot. Maybe they'll put on four, five, six inches, something like that. You know, in some cases they're born a little bigger, like my Peruvians are typically probably even bigger than this at birth. But many of my Surinams are just born small the first year or so. They're just, they don't really grow all that much. Uh, it's important not to overfeed them because this is the phase where they're susceptible to regurgitation. And I found if you feed these guys too much, you know, like every week during the first year, they're going to regurgitate and then you're going to have to not feed them for a while to get over it and uh, you don't want to deal with regurgitation so don't try to overfeed these animals to get them to grow faster during the first year they just have really sensitive digestive systems and many of them will regurgitate so some people have um i've you know shipped them out a baby boa baby red tail and they were surprised by how small it was but again these aren't giant snakes and this is you know pretty typical size uh, for a one-year-old Suriname. A lot of people are probably thinking, oh, that boa is stunted or something like that. No, I can assure you it's not. Some of my Surinams are bigger than this. My Peruvians are usually quite a bit bigger than this at a year old, but some of the Surinams are just small, and that's just how they are. Um, again, these are not giants. So if you have a boa that's about a year old and it's not yet pushing six feet like some people think, you don't have to worry. Your boa is normal. Just continue feeding it like you're doing and eventually it's going to grow bigger. Moving on to 2021, this is a Suriname from 2021 born here. And this animal is probably about maybe two and a half feet. Noticeably thicker than the yearling of course, but still not a huge animal. And I think a lot of people have this idea that boas are like this big when they're born, which is completely not true. As I said, my Surinams are a little bit smaller when they're born than many other red tails, like my Peruvians. And if I had a Peruvian that was a year old, it probably would be about this big or bigger. So the Peruvians do outgrow the Surinams in the first year, in my experience, but this is normal for a Surinam uh, that's two years old. So if you have a smaller bow, it's again not a huge thing to worry about. They're just slow growers. This also varies. Some Surinams, of course, are going to grow faster than others. Most of the boas I'm showing you today are on the slower end of the curve, but I assure you that it's normal and you don't need to be worried if your boa is just growing slowly. As long as it's eating, it's not regurgitating, um, and it's growing, you know, maybe 6 to 12 inches a year. You just don't have to be concerned. So. Don't lose sleep. Don't believe the hype on Facebook when someone tells you you need to power feed your boa. You know, of course, if you're only feeding it once a month, that's not enough. You should be feeding baby boas anywhere from about every 10 days to two weeks or so. Uh, but you don't need to be all that concerned if they're growing slowly. Next, we have a 2020 born animal. So this guy is a little over two and a half years old, pushing three years old. One of my holdbacks from 2020. 
and I you know I have a, a trio two females and a male from this litter that I held back just like this guy he's just so nice and light beautifully colored and this guy for the first maybe year and a half he like really wasn't growing all that much um, in fact he's smaller than the two females and just in about the last year or so he really started to put on some size and um, you know one thing that you can notice is that when they get to this age around two and a half three years old they start to develop the adult musculature or you know just the more muscular appearance they develop kind of more of a flattened square appearance in cross-section less of a round appearance and they just feel more muscular you know they hold on a little tighter and you can just appreciate the muscles if you look you should see this nice muscle definition and this nice line around along their side showing the muscle that's normal so this guy I don't know I'd say he's maybe three a little over three feet maybe three and a half feet um, his two sisters are probably about four feet they're a little bit bigger than him but still I'm not at all concerned this guy's doing nicely and he'll probably be ready to breed in another maybe two years or so when he hits about five and a half six feet um, of course I wouldn't breed the females that small Females typically need about another year to breed, but males can breed for two red tails at around four to five years old. Next, the year 2019, and most of you guys will recognize this guy as Mr. Pink, beautiful pink uh, Florida red tails, two to hope bloodline animal produced by Brian Abramson. This is, um, I didn't breed this guy, obviously, this is from Brian Abramson. And this guy I've had for about a year now. When I got him, he was actually only about the same size as the male I just showed you. He's actually put on quite a bit of size since I got him. Definitely much more muscular and bulky. Uh, he's, I'd say he's probably not that far away from being ready to breed. I don't think I'm going to breed him this coming fall, but possibly in the um, 2025 breeding season he'll be ready to breed. They're just a beautiful animal you can see the nice muscle development his muscles have really developed nicely over the last year since i've had them and just a great calm animal just a pleasure to hold one of my chillest suriname red tails and i'm excited to have the new genes he's carrying to add into my breeding group uh, got big plans ahead for this guy and just really happy happy to have this guy in my collection but example of a 2019 male you know almost four years old probably about i don't know four feet maybe a little four and a half feet or so a good size for an animal this age next 2018 this female is not quite five years old you know a little over four and a half years old right now approaching adulthood i would say she's probably not ready to breed in the fall coming so you know her first breeding season will probably be uh What's that, 2025? So not 2024, 2025. Same as the male I just showed you who is a year younger. In fact, I could possibly pair up the two if I so desired. But just looking nice, uh, much thicker, more muscular. You can feel the power of these almost adult Surinams. And not fatty at all. You want an animal that's nice and lean and muscular, but you don't want the ribs to show. And you know, typically on my feeding schedule of, most of them are fat about every two weeks an appropriately sized rodent. They're gonna take, you know, about five years to reach breeding size. So this female's right on track, nice 2018. I don't think I've shown this one very much. Uh, just had a small litter that year and just held back this one animal, but uh, nice animal and uh, look forward to getting her into breeding trials in a few years. Next we have a 2017 born animal. This is a Prometheus bloodline animal born here. Uh, you know, one of the animals from Prometheus himself, his second litter. And most of the animals I've shown you I would say are typical size for that age. I have to admit this female is on the small side for a 2017 born animal. She's maybe, I don't know, around four and a half feet or so. Uh, not sure if she might have some kind of a dwarf gene or some, you know, smaller size genes. It's pretty likely that there's, of course, some genetic basis to the size because I feed these animals similar feeding regimens. In fact, this female, for a while, she just wasn't growing all that much. I increased her feeding. What I found, though, when I do that is I either get animals that regurgitate 
or the animals get fat and you don't want either of that. So it's better just stick to the slow but steady, you know, once every two weeks or so feeding regimen. And this female has bulked out in the last year or two, gotten more muscular. She's just likely just a small animal because her sister is maybe probably about a foot longer than she is right now. So this female, uh, 2017 females, most of them can breed uh, this coming year. I don't think I'm gonna breed her though. She's just a little too small. Give her another year at least, see how she does. She's in shed right now, unfortunately, but this is a really colorful animal, a lot of pinks and magentas and oranges, just a gorgeous looking animal, but just a small animal. And that's just normal. Some of them are just gonna be smaller than others. You might just have one that's on the small side and you know nothing to worry about. Uh, if you want a giant snake, don't get a boa constrictor. They're just, they're just not giant snakes. Get a berm, okay? I had a Burmese python in high school. I That thing was uh, about eight feet at, at a year. You know, uh, a year and a half, it was probably 11, 12 feet. It was just a growing machine. I could watch that thing grow literally. It would grow like four inches a week, kind of crazy. Uh, but boas don't do that. They're very slow growers. And it's normal for them to take around five years to get to adult size. On to the year 2016. This is a 2016 born Suriname from Prometheus himself. And this female, this is about what I would consider to be pretty much adult size. You know, as you probably know, snakes, including boas, will continue to grow at a slow rate for the, their entire life. So she will continue to grow but she's probably not gonna put on more than a few inches. Right now, she's about, I don't know, six, six and a half feet or so. This female had her first litter last year, nice litter. Uh, it's actually my double dose Prometheus litter, number four, if you've been following my breeding. Just a beautiful litter, and this is the mother. But just a gorgeous animal. She's got the more the dirty look with lots of smudges and freckles and background markings. Nice, long, deep red tail. Nice, kind of irregular peak saddles but just what uh, this line is known for. Uh, really nice animal, typical size for an adult Suriname. You know, of course, as I've said again and again, these animals, they're just not giants. You don't need, you know, room size enclosures to keep them. So if you're concerned that a true red tail's too big for you, uh, you probably don't need to worry that much. Because uh, they're, just, they're just not giant snakes. But anyway, 2016 born. Pretty much adult size or um, female. Next, a 2015 born true red tail, and I didn't. I don't have any Surinams from 2015, so rather than leave out the year, I thought I'd just grab a Peruvian from 2015. This female was born here back then, doing quite well. This is a Pocalpa, or described as the Pocalpa locality, and she actually had her first litter last year. wasn't a huge litter, but some really nice babies that were produced. The, Sur the, the Peruvians in general are a little bigger than the Surinams. They're definitely kind of more heavily bodied, a little bit longer. I'd say this female is probably about seven feet, but she's not gonna get too much bigger than this. And I would say she just feels a little more muscular, but not that much more. Maybe just cause she's a little bit bigger. But as I mentioned before, I find the Peruvians, they're larger when they're born and they grow faster for the first few years in the Surinams. But of course, every animal is different. Some just grow slower than others and the variation is normal. So you don't have to be obsessing about the size of your boa as long as it's putting on slow but steady growth. Which brings us to the final year of this countdown, and that's 2014. 2014 is a special year for me because it's the year I had my first litter of true red tails, my first Suriname litter, they were. And rather than showing you one of those, I thought I'd show you this female, which some of you guys are familiar with. This is a female produced by Russell LeFleur, and she's just always been on the small side. Yeah, when she was younger, for a couple years, it seemed like she barely grew at all. You know, so I tried feeding her more frequently, but again, I don't think she regurgitated, but she was getting a little chunky and just basically stuck to the every other week or so feeding regimen. Right now she's uh, about nine years old and she's about five feet long. 
So I would say based on the fact that I've grown my boas the same way, uh, these differences are, they have to be due to genetic differences rather than environmental differences, you know, the old nature versus nurture debate. This female apparently just has the genes for small size. And she bred for me last year, had a real nice litter, my litter number three. And I still have some really nice babies from this litter. Um, some of you guys have expressed interest because these babies, because their mother is so small, they have the genetic potential not to get all that big. You know, so I would say some of them may be about this size as adults. Some of them might be a little bit bigger based on their father who's, uh, you know, maybe about six feet or so. But not going to be a huge animal. So if you want to get a really nice boa, it's not going to get that big, a true red tail. You might want to check out that litter. In fact, uh, I was looking at them the other day and uh, they're really developing nicely. I almost uh, think I want to do a video just focusing on some of my Surinams from last year that are still available. Just because I have so many really choice animals. Uh, but that's, we'll have to wait for another day. But anyway, this animal, normal size, she's completely healthy. Just on the small side and some boas are going to be on the small end of the curve you don't have to be obsessed about the size slow but steady wins the race uh, feed about every two weeks or so and you should be good anyway i hope this was helpful i hope some of you guys who've been worrying about the size of your boas this kind of puts uh, that to rest for you uh, as always shoot me any questions or comments you have thanks for watching and enjoy your boas